What's going on, podcast listeners? My name is Michael Chernow. I am a restaurateur and lifestyle entrepreneur, and I am truly obsessed with living a life better than yesterday through wellness, fitness, and good vibes. I've always wondered if the drive to succeed is something we are born with, or if it's something that is made over time through grit, drive, and perseverance. I get to answer that question exactly, and the goal of this podcast is to talk with people that have absolutely crushed it in life and have inspired me to do the same. This is Born or Made. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Born or Made podcast. Today, I have a couple of ladies that have done something spectacular in New York City. Um, in 2015, Chrissy Jones and Chloe Kernahan launched a business called Sky Ting, which is a studio that teaches all sorts of things, including yoga, predominantly yoga. Um, and they have an amazing, amazing online platform as well called Sky Team Television or TV that uh, they actually launched before the whole online digital fitness movement happened, which I'm really excited to learn about because um, to be able to have a vision like that, um, specifically in a time like we're in today, is spectacular and very unique. Um, and so I wanted to introduce Chrissy and Chloe. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. We're so excited. Awesome. Uh, just to give you guys a quick rundown, I know that we spoke about this before, but just so everybody else knows, Born or Made is a podcast that I launched about a year ago where I talk to people that have inspired me and many, many others about their journey. Um, and, and really, we, we get into the nature nurture question, the idea of uh, whether you were born with an inherent ability to crush it uh, or if you were made over time. Uh, and, and I'm really interested to, to get your, your opinion on that. Um, but I also want to talk to you all about uh, potentially things that you do, uh, habits or morning routines or evening routines or midday, midday routines that help you stay on the beam and stay successful and stay motivated. Um, but first, let's get your story. So uh, whoever wants to kick it off, I'd love to hear your background and how you guys ended up uh, where you are today. Cool. Just going to go? You want me to go? Sure. Sure. Uh I'll go. So we're Sky Ting. We launched Sky Ting in 2015 um, as one yoga studio in Chinatown where Chloe and I happened to live and we really believed in the neighborhood. There were some like-minded businesses popping up. A, a bunch of friends lived in the neighborhood, but there was no yoga. So um, we had a vision to open a community center that was very heavily um, influenced by art and design. And we basically just wanted to do what we were already doing. Chloe and I were yoga teachers for a long time, leading trainings, retreats, and kind of the whole shebang, but just for another person. Um, and we were like, why don't we just do this for ourselves, but better, more aesthetically pleasing and work with our friends. So that was kind of the vision. We didn't really have like such a business plan to open our first location. It happened organically where I found a space in Chinatown, fell in love with it, signed a lease and had, you know, I was 26 and had nothing to lose. So I was like, whatever, just go for it. See if it happens. And it kind of popped off. And so we grew into another studio. We started doing teacher training programs. We grew a community. We eventually grew into another studio. So we had three physical locations, 70 teachers, 60 other people working at the studio. And then instead of growing brick and mortar, which you know we thought we would lose the community feel if we opened too many studios and spread ourselves too thin, we're like, how do we reach more people and stay, you know, present and have the lifestyles that we want? So that was Sky Ting TV was our solution to that problem. So we launched Sky Ting TV November 2019. Ooh. And then <laughs> we are here in this wow. digital world. That Great is, uh, I mean, I got to tell you, I think that is... November 2019 was a pivotal time in my, I mean, I'm in the restaurant business and I've been in the restaurant business my whole life. And as we know, and as you guys know, I mean, any experiential business right now, specifically brick and mortar has been challenged by this pandemic. 
2019, uh, November 2019, I also made a decision to sell a bunch of equity at my business, Seymour's, um, which, mm -hmm. you know, people said to me, uh, you know, mid pandemic, how did you, you know, how did you, how did you know it was the right time? And honestly, I just had a feeling that it was the right time for me to, to sell some equity. Um, and so it's, it's, it's crazy the experience um, that we are all in right now, specifically in a business that like is what you guys are doing in the world of wellness is so necessary. It's, it's necessary pre-pandemic, it's necessary in pandemic, and it's gonna be very necessary post-pandemic. Um, what, like, what was it like going into the pandemic um, with having set up this, this online component of your business? I mean, what, what did you have any, I mean, what were you, how, how did you guys respond to it? Yeah, so we had started Sky Team TV in November 2019, but it was definitely like our side project, you know, because our main focus and definitely where most of our energy was throughout the day to day was still on brick and mortar spaces. And we have, you know, global retreats that we used to run. We had large teacher trainings that we ran throughout the whole year. Um, and so when the pandemic came down and we went into lockdown, it was very quickly, obviously, a pivot and shift to Sky Team TV being our only thing that we could use and we could make use of. Um, and so at that moment, we had like 15 recorded videos online only. And what we had been doing before our process for Sky Team TV, we were kind of precious about it. Like we were doing in-studio filmings with fancy videographers and voiceovers and like lights and, you know, getting wardrobe and makeup and all this kind of stuff. Um, and so obviously when we went into lockdown and we weren't able to be in person with anyone else, um, we had to pivot and adjust and figure out what it would look like from in-home spaces. And so our initial thought was we would do live streaming um, for classes. And we did it actually in studio, I think like five times or four times in studio. And it was amazing because we had like 11,000 people tuning in for these live streams from all around the world. And there was like so much good energy and everyone was so thankful. But then we tried to do it with a teacher from their home space and their Wi-Fi speed wasn't high enough to do a live stream. So then it was like, okay, so this isn't really going to be sustainable because we were also, we had gone into the studio the first week of lockdown, but after that we were feeling like it was too much to even be leaving our houses on a regular basis like that. So then we adjusted and we pivoted to having teachers do filmings in their own home homes as like pre-recorded classes. Um, and we just kind of set up parameters like guidelines, like try and put a plant next to you and like make sure you have nice light on your face. And you know, it's like trying to teach a yoga teacher how to be a tech mogul very quickly, like didn't really work. Some of our videos definitely were a little rough, especially early on, um, but we just continued that like nimble process of adjusting and like refining and redefining what the programming on Sky Team TV would look like. Um, and we were so lucky that our community from in-studio classes was so strong and so um, they were so willing to go with us and help us along the way, you know? So we definitely got like a ton of feedback from people, but also people just like wanting to support in whatever way they could. And so everyone was kind of gung-ho, even though it was definitely like our first pancake that we were working on as, mm. as the pandemic started. So there was like plenty of tech issues and, you know, like we're still dealing with tech issues because we're not tech people. So it's like, working with developers to adjust and to fix and everything we have on our site is custom, nothing, it's not a Squarespace or a, you know, WordPress backdrop, it's all created um, by our team. And so we just continue to make, make tiny tweaks and continue to refine our offering. I have a bunch of questions. Um, one is, where do you think the in-person fitness lands once this is you know i mean i don't think i think that it's a, i think it's probably you know a few years away until we can honestly say that this is past us right doesn't matter how many vaccines are administered um but where do you like you know where do you think the 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 in-person lands um when this is done or at least when we can see the forest through the trees do you think a percentage, a, a larger percentage of people are going to be still doing online? Um, do you think that, you know, most people are going to be leaning more online? What do you think? 
Honestly, I, I feel like people are dying to get back to anything in person. I personally cannot wait to be back in the studio. So I always think there will be a huge community that's just like an in-person type of person. And screen fatigue is real. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think that digital fitness is going away. And we'll certainly be pouring all of our resources and attention to SkyTing TV. It's just like a smarter model for us, but we do want to have some sort of um, physical offering when this whole thing is over, because that's where really the magic is for us with this um, teaching yoga is like being person to person, seeing our community. That what is what set us apart early on is like our studio does not feel corporate. It doesn't feel like run of the mill, come in and leave, you're anonymous. Like we're very much like giving everybody shout outs, like making jokes with our people. And yeah, so that's the fun part for us. We're gonna keep doing both and hopefully like just, um, work smarter when we do open our physical spaces, not have three locations, but one special location. Um, I bet sizes will be um, a little smaller. The mats surely will be more spread out than when we had it pre-pandemic. We literally had like two inches of space between mats, which is, I know, some Guardian people's style. nightmare. <laughs> yeah, but, but we're going to guys- go back to in-person. So you guys have decided to close a couple studios and you're going to, when this thing passes, you're going to open up with one. We closed our two most expensive studios and we kept the cheap one for Got filming it. and an office and to hold our merch. Got it. Um, what do you think, you know, yoga studio in New York city, there's a fair amount of yoga studios in New York city and fitness in general. I mean, yoga is certainly a form of fitness, my wife also is a longtime yogi and, you know, taught yoga and, and, and did that whole thing. Um, certainly didn't open up a studio, but, but there are a lot of yoga studios in New York City. Uh, how did you guys distinguish yourselves when you came to the market? What was, what was the distinguishing element for you? I think because um, we had just, I mean, we kind of like refined them now at this point to like our three pillars of what makes Skyting Skyting. One of them was design and aesthetic, which a lot of yoga studios didn't necessarily put an effort or emphasis on just because, I mean, I think running any kind of brick and mortar space in New York City is really, really hard. And usually yoga studios are running on really thin margins and like, you know, the only way to really make a big profit, generally speaking with yoga is like doing larger trainings that have the higher price tag. And so I think for most studios, the business model isn't around creating necessarily like a really strong brand side of things. It's more about the offering of the classes. But like Chrissy said, like one of our inclinations for even opening a space was wanting to adjust what we were seeing around ourselves and to really put like our feelings, our visions, our like creativity embodied into space. Um, And so early on SkyTing definitely like put its name out on the scene by even just like our Instagram, which is still pretty funny. But back when we first started, I think was even more funny. It was like a ton of animals, like, you know, like running around a yard or doing something weird. And it was just kind of quirky and not what you would have expected from a yoga space. So I think people were kind of like a little caught off guard, curious. They wanted to know more. Our original space had a huge giraffe in it, a stuffed giraffe, which is the right space you could. <laughs> and so people would walk in and be like, wait, what is this? You know, so we had, there was, you know, a refined element to Sky Team, but then also this kind of quirky, more fun also side of it, which I think people were found refreshing, like a little palate cleanse maybe for what, other studios were offering in the city space. Um, And then another big pillar for us has always been the quality of the teachings that we offer. And we've always stood really right behind all of our teachers who for us, we hire based on their, not only their trainings, but also teachers that have really embodied their practices. And so they're relatable. They're people that students want to like talk to after class. They have personality, but they're clearly like 
living their work, you know, and doing their work, um, which I think has also helped a lot. And then like Chrissy said, the community aspect where it's not just you're in and you're out. Like our front desk staff knew almost every student's name walking in the door if you came regularly. And like, you know, even now in the pandemic, like we have Zoom, um, yoga classes and everyone will go off mute and be like, hey, and they're not even talking to the teacher, they're talking to each other, like students that they miss seeing next to each other because everyone would come to, you know, a Tuesday, 6.30 p.m. And like, you see all the same people all the time. So I think like those three pillars for us really set us apart early on and helped us just continue to grow and build um, what SkyTing has morphed into. Um, Co-founders. Co-founders are, it's not easy being, having a co-founder. Um, I know it all too well, having co-founders is a challenge. How do you two delineate who does what uh, at, at, uh, at Sky Ting? Have you had challenges with that? If so, ha have you guys taken any measures or have gone down any paths to sort of uh, mitigate any issues that you've had? Because I think for, you know, Partnerships are very, very tough. And I don't think enough people talk about them. You know, it, it, it all looks beautiful and, and awesome when you're smiling at the camera or, you know, on social media. But the truth of the matter is, is that partnerships are really hard. And so whenever I get an opportunity to talk to, to partners, um, I like to ask the question because I think it's important that we, that people understand that partnerships are, are certainly met with challenge. And uh, I believe that, you know, roles are very important. So. Yeah, we have definitely learned over time um, how to be friends and business partners. Um, we started off as friends and we even lived together before SkyTing was created. And somehow like that is probably my greatest like achievement is like we are still very close friends, but definitely agree it is hard. We both work at being partners and friends every day. Um, and roles are very important. We learned that um, over the course of having SkyTing for five years and we keep refining and redefining um, our roles because Chloe and I have such similar skill sets that we really started the business doing everything together. And then as we grew, it just became unsustainable. Um, so now Chloe runs more of the programming and the content and does the production for our shoots and is more of like facilitating anything that has to do with teachers. I'm more like doing marketing, social, like doing our online digital advertising, stuff like that, PR stuff. And that's working for us for now, but I know it'll change again. But somehow by a stroke of miracle, we are still friends. But I think that really has to do with the fact that there's deep care and respect for one another. We do live our yoga practice. Like we apply the principles of yoga to our own life and to our business. And we're both in therapy. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, I think that that's, that's really incredible that you guys have been able to do that. Um, you know, I, I will say that I think you said something very important and that was respect. Um, and I think the respect in general, I mean, friendships obviously are built on trust and, and respect, right? And, mm -hmm. and business partnerships start, um, typically start with, you know, an equal amount of, of, of respect um, and as, and trust. And as you grow, sometimes, you know, things go a little awry. I love the fact that you said that things change and you smile about that and you're comfortable with that. And I think people need to know that, right? Like like business is organic, right? And, and totally. it is fluid and it is yeah. its own living thing. And sometimes we're hit with a pandemic and holy shit, everything gets turned upside down and everything changes. Literally. And, and yeah. our jobs do not look like they do on paper in our operating agreement. Like what right. we're doing now is totally different from what we started as. And, and, and I think that I'm so happy that you said that because I, I do believe that change is something that is at the, at, the, at the core of what makes business successful. The ability to embrace change and the ability to be open to change and the ability to like walk through change together and respect each other for what 
you both bring to the table. It's, it's awesome for me to see two friends in business that, that can, that can say, you know, like, yeah, it's tough, but we're, we're still friends and we apply the principles of, of our teachings into our lives. And, um, I think that's wonderful. Sky and that's, uh, is also, yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. It's, no, I was no. just going to add, it's also the beauty of having a small team is the ability to be flexible. And that's why we're mm -hmm. like, actually, um, we're pared down now compared to where we were pre pandemic, but we actually can be more nimble that way. And like, you know, go with the flow and that's what we have to do right now. Um, I, I guess I would ask you guys, I mean, I'm sure that you do some things different. Um, I, is it snowing in New York, by the way? Oh yeah. It's dumping. It's snowing. Yes. Yeah. It's snowing. I'm, I'm upstate. It's, 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 it's <laughs> blizzarding up here. Um, Habits are very important. Uh, I think businesses tend to, uh, 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 you know, have their own habits, but I think human beings really, uh, their success and also failures are a direct result of the habits that they, that they implement into their lives. Um, and I've learned that more and more through my own personal experiences, but also through this podcast, um, I've learned that a lot of successful people, um, and that doesn't mean like necessarily monetarily successful. That means just like successful people that could walk through life feeling some feeling successful and have impacted at least one person's life um, have have a, have a series of habits that they implement. Do you all have? Uh, I'd like to ask you individually. Um, do you have habits uh, that you that you stick to that you believe in? Yeah. I mean, I think obviously movement and yoga is a very important habit for both of us. Um, but for me personally, the shift in the pandemic was a real gift because it gave me mornings back. Um, Chrissy and I both pre-pandemic were like on the, the grind of New York City. And so we were getting up early to teach yoga privates, going into the studio to teach group classes, running around like here, there, everywhere. And then obviously like being a banshee young girl in New York. So going out to dinner and going to the ballet and going to theater and all the fun things. But you know, what that amounted to for me on a regular basis was just extreme adrenal fatigue. Um, and like, I would go to acupuncture every week and my acupuncturist would regularly tell me, she's like, okay, we're just gonna like keep you alive right now with this session and <laughs> hope that you're okay. <laughs> Cause I don't know how you're still surviving. Um, and so with the pandemic, it was just a forced slowdown, but it really helped me reassess and redefine, I think um, how I wanna live just my daily life and also like get more in tune and closer to I think what I teach on a regular basis around finding center and steadiness and being able to cultivate quiet versus like constantly being like out and loud and like available rather than just like being able to turn in and so my morning routine has become super important waking up slowly I don't even wake up with an alarm but I do wake up early it's and I feel amazing when I wake up as opposed to like the heaviness of sleep still pulling me back. Um, and then I usually start with tea and a water and I do a meditation. And then I do a short Skype and TV video, um, not to plug, but we have short videos that are like pretty excellent to just like start your day, like 15 minutes or 30 minutes of movement. And that really like sets the tone for me to feel great to do anything, whether it's like having to go into the studio or to sit at my computer at home and do work or whatever it might be, do a podcast. Um, but just that moment starting my day of actually like doing embodied practices then sets the tone for everything else I do. Um, and so I'm hopeful that even as the world reopens, I can maintain that integrity of the start because that has made a huge difference in just my general livelihood, I'd say. Yeah, and I'm similar. Um, my routines are definitely more structured and refined now um, than before the pandemic. Um, and Chloe and I, you know, people think that we're like perfect with our habits and rituals because we're yoga teachers. So like when I used to get sick, I used to feel like such a fraud because I, I did burn myself out just like everybody else in New York City, even though I'm teaching wellness and yoga. Um, but over time, and I think this just has to do with age and seeing what works for you, I've really refined my routines that work for me and my business and what makes me feel good. And I agree, the morning is so special to me and important 
if I have a bad morning, it's really hard for me to feel successful during my day. So I actually start prepping for my morning the night before, and I'm really good about my bedtime routine. I wear my blue blocking, ridiculous red glasses at night, you know, no screen time at night, an hour before bed. I read, I go to bed slowly. I get eight or nine hours of sleep. I love to sleep. I try. And then wake up, same routine as Chloe, lemon water in the morning, meditation. I, I started meditating twice a day during the pandemic. And I'm like, wow, this has really changed my life. I've always been into meditation, but would get on the wagon and off the wagon. But committing to twice a day in the morning at night really changed my life. Like I feel like it's my anchor and grounding cords. So no matter what's happening, I can like have that special place that I've cultivated internally. I just want to dig, I want to dig into that for a minute because both of you have now mentioned that meditation is a massive part of your morning routine. Um, do you, do you all subscribe to the same uh, technique in meditation or do you have your own style of meditation? So we, I've studied all types of meditation and I switch around which I'm playing with. Right now I'm really into Vedic meditation. Our friend Tony Lupinacci gave me a mantra that I've been doing for the past, I'm supposed to do it every day for 40 days and then get a new mantra. So that's what I'm doing now, but we've done Buddhist stuff. We've done like body scanning stuff. We've done all kinds of things, but for me, the goal is not to get attached to a technique. It's really to just have the experience. So I do like to shake up what I'm doing. So I'm not like confusing the technique for the practice. I want to, I want to just walk through the process of meditation. Um, because I will say that I've, 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 you know, been into meditation for years and I have also jumped on and off the ship. Um, most recently I'm, I'm into more of like the gratification meditation, which is, I mean, that's the way I call it. You know, I've been doing this, these pretty intense breathing exercises. Um, and, uh, and I, and like, I physically feel, uh, like it's a, you know, the, I've been doing the, the Wim Hof breathing and mm -hmm. it's been for me, it, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty extraordinary, um, as opposed to, to just breathing, um, and, and, mm -hmm. and focusing. But I would love to hear your 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 process because I, I I think a lot of people want to get into meditation and simply just don't know and maybe they they download the Calm app or they download um, Headspace and it's not it's not really clicking. So if somebody's listening to this, can you walk us through what what you know both of you what your meditation process is like? Definitely, I think first and it, it's emphasized by teachers all the time, but I think as practitioners, sometimes it, you know, you, you don't really listen when a teacher tells you to set up a, a good seat. Um, because I find like, if I have myself well prepared, and even if that means doing a little bit of movement before I actually sit down for complete stillness, getting myself in like the space of meditation really helps for then me to drop into a state of meditation as opposed to just like, sitting down anywhere and expecting it to just happen. So I think sometimes setting the, like the scene for it to work helps me at least in like, just, so that's why I like have a tea and I have a water and I use the restroom before I start to do it because then I'll just feel a little more settled and a little more centered. Um, but I always start with a, a simple body scan and like present moment awareness. So just like listening to what's around me, listening to the sound of my breath paying attention to what's actually happening in the moment, because no matter what kind of meditation you're doing, I think, you know, we're always gearing towards and fighting to be in present moment. And that's like, you know, the hardest thing on planet earth for any of us to actually be in for full amounts do you listen, of time. Do you, do you have music on or is it silent? I usually don't, um, it's silent, but you know, you can always hear sounds around you. You hear like a truck on the street, you hear your, you know, partner in the room next door, you hear your neighbor's footsteps on the floor above you, whatever it might be, the wind outside. And even just like those small hooks that you can start to really recognize and cultivate as your drawbacks when your mind starts to wander and you start to think about, you know, what you're gonna have for breakfast or that meeting that you have coming up. Those little hooks that can really drag you into your present space have been my like golden gift for any technique that then I'm trying to loop into. And, you know, 
techniques like Vedic where you're repetition, re repeating a mantra over and over and over again are really nice because even when I'm not doing those meditations, there's, um, there's like a rhythm that you create. I've found in my body with repetitious like mantra meditation that then it, it's like almost like a reverb that stays in your body forever. So that when I'm in a meditation, even if I'm not doing that repetition, there's this like understanding of the sensation when you start to quiet down the thoughts and like things start to get quieter and quieter and more still and more still. And like, even if it's just in the first, you know, when you're first developing a meditation practice, even if it's just a moment that you have that feeling, it's like over time you start to develop periods that are a little bit longer and a little bit longer in those spaces so that you can trust even if you have a bad meditation one day where you can't quiet it down, it's like, that's cool. That's where I'm at. And then I'll do it another day and it'll be an entirely different experience. So I don't know. I think everyone needs to just continue to try it because like it does change on a regular basis. And like, I think studying ourselves is one of the most important things that we as individuals can do to be active members of society. It's like, we need to pay attention. Um, and it's a real technique that needs to be honed, right? It's not just gonna come easy. Like when I first started meditating, I was like, oh, I got this. Like, I'm, I'm so good, my mind is so chill. And then I actually started to notice each time I wander off, each time I like get distracted. And then you're just like, oh, right. I'm a monkey inside there. I need, <laughs> need some techniques to help cool me in. It's so hard these days it's, <laughs> it's so hard you know and yes. and i i agree that studying ourselves is so important and it's honestly the last thing on most people's priority lists right i mean that's the truth and there's so many distractions in our path on a day on a daily basis so many most 99.9 .9 of the world just does not ever think to sit in silence and actually be. And that's so, it's, it, it, it didn't used to be that way, you know? I mean, we have, when I really, and I've said this a couple of times because I believe it at my core, we're in a place in, in, in evolution where it, it's never been like this. Like human beings were meant to move. Um, we're meant to not sit all day. We're meant to be active. We're meant to use our hands. We're, <laughs> we're meant to, to not be sedentary. And in the last 75 to 100 years, we've become sedentary beings. And we've seen this massive shift to disease and death. Right. Um, and with, with modern medicine, right, like we would imagine that things would just be getting better. And, 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 and ultimately, we find out that like, you know, we are able to fix a lot of things, but but the human, the race of human beings are just getting worse. It's just we're not we're not evolving. We're actually devolving, um, which is sad to see. Uh, so I, I think that that study of self is so important. Uh, and and uh, and I'm a culprit of not putting enough energy into it. And I and I appreciate you saying it because now just tap me on my shoulder and said, hey, Mike, like, let's focus a little bit more on it. now that we have the time the pandemic. Um, Chrissy, what about you? Like, what's your process? Yeah, I mean, I just want to say for we are more sedentary, but we're also taking in more information than we ever have before. And so my meditation practice is like a real data dump it's where I could like delete the files of the day and like continuously empty myself out, which just feels amazing. And agree with Chloe. I think setting the space is important. I like to ritualize it and make it special because um, when what, whatever you're doing, like if you're putting your attention and awareness and uh, intention into it, you get more bang for your buck, right? Like when you're baking with joy and there's music on and you're happy, your food tastes better. The same with meditation. If it's like a whole situation, like you go into a restaurant and you're not just eating the food you're looking around you're seeing the people you're seeing the waiter how's the service it's a whole thing so um that's kind of how i view meditation it's my way to delete the files of the day it's my way to have a dialogue with myself because we are chloe and i are very social beings and um you know now we're all technical beings so this is a good way to just like 
reconnect to what it feels like to be a being breathing and just living in present moment. So it's my being practice. It's not my doing practice. And it is a practice. Like I was so glad that I had techniques beforehand, before my stress levels were supposed to go up. I really relied on meditation and, um, I didn't see that like huge spike of anxiety that a lot of my friends were experiencing through the pandemic, even though it's a really stressful time and our businesses are closing and there's a lot of things we have to do. Um, but our teacher always says, you don't learn how to swim when you're drowning. You build your techniques of swimming so that when you need to use it, you have it. So let's, prep for our futures and all meditate together. <laughs> you don't learn how to swim when you're drowning. Yeah. Um, success is a word that I think has changed over the last few years. I think it's changed a lot in the pandemic um, because traditional success, I think, you know, as a kid growing up for me just meant like, how much money you had, what kind of car you drove, uh, where you lived, um, you know, what school you went to. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, and now a lot of that stuff is pretty um, irrelevant, because we're all at home and, you know, and spending time with our family, <laughs> or alone. Um, and so I'd like to ask you all, you both, what does success mean to you? What does it mean to you? I, I think, oh, you, oh, go. you go. You, you go, Clau. <laughs> gonna wing it. <laughs> I know, I know, me too, me too, we'll see. Um, success for me, um, it has more to do with like feeling in integrity, I think, than anything else. Um, so, Definitely, I've never been someone that's like good at money or interested at being good at money. Luckily, I have like a partner who's a little more stable on that side of things. Um, but it's never been my reach and teaching yoga is not a way to like reach that goal either, I'd say, unless you're really on the hustle um, to sell a lot of yourself on that side of things. Um, but for me, what when I feel I think most successful is when like I have joy you know and and I think real joy comes into play when you feel super centered um super safe and super easy so those factors for come into play when I'm living in a in a sense of like truth you know and that changes on a regular basis for me of, of what that looks like and I have to readjust and realign my compass because it's easy to go off base and to like start to do things because of money or start to do things because it seems like it's the right next step or what society you know teaches you to do or you know whatever factors you might be playing with in the, any given moment but um yeah I mean trusting my own intuition a lot of times has been my best guide, I'd say, in, in finding what I need to do and what I want to do. Um, and I feel pretty quickly when I'm out of it. Um, even if I don't always voice it right away, I like kind of know when it's not when it's not good. And then I don't feel very successful, even if I'm doing great by other by outside standards, you know. Mm. So then I have to take a step back and call myself out and take a look at things and reassess and realign. Does that make sense? Yeah. Chrissy, what about you? Um, very, I loved what Chloe said, and I feel very similarly. I think for me, being successful means living authentically according to my uniqueness as a person and not living based on society or the influence of others or being scared of what others think of me. I spent a lot of time, a lot of years just living from a place of like wanting people to like me, like just 
teaching even yoga in that way of like, oh my God, I hope my students like me. And by, you know, my practice of meditation, learning about myself, like cultivating more awareness of who I actually am, it just feels so much better to live from that place of like, oh, I'm actually doing this because it's a joy and I love it and I don't care what you guys think. And I'm going to do this because it makes sense for my soul and my truth instead of like, you know, trying to get a boyfriend or a job that is pays more or whatever. So definitely living in truth and authenticity, but it is a practice and it takes a ton of awareness. So I think that really does bring me the most amount of joy and ease and all of those things is my definition of success as well. This has been so much fun. And I, I, I'm really, I, I, I feel so, I feel so grateful to have been able to spend uh, this, this time with you guys. Um, I always ask the question at the end of a podcast, whether you believe you were born or made. Uh, so I'm going to ask Chrissy and Chloe, do you think <laughs> that you were born to get after it and accomplish what you've accomplished in one of the hardest markets if not the hardest market in the world to open up a business and scale a business and still be in business after a pandemic? Um, or do you think you, you, you were made over time? I think I was born to be doing this. It does feel in line with my soul's purpose and the pieces aligned in such a way for me to be doing this exact thing. And I truly believe that what's occurring is, you know, divine and perfect for me. Um, but it did take effort. So I think it's both. Um, there's a little bit of effort that I had to put forth and without which I wouldn't be here, but there's a lot of grace in what I feel like I'm doing. And, like something from a higher power. Like this didn't happen. I didn't have these proclivities alone. Um, something was inside of me that came out over time. But I would say more born, just to give you a short answer. <laughs> Sweet. I, I love that. I love that. I, I you know, I, the, most people, most people cop out with a, with a both. And so I love, <laughs> I, I, I love that you said born. No yeah. pressure, Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I feel like, yeah, I'm going to go more with born, I'd say, in just like, I honestly feel like I, I can, I can do a lot of different things. Um, and I, I put my mind to things and what I want to get done, I get done um, in a way that allows me to, to bring things to full fruition. Um, and yes, definitely tons of effort and tons of mistakes and tons of stumbles along the way to get here. Um, so, you know, it's not all bright and shiny. And also like, I just want to call out and recognize like the privilege that both of us are born into like that, already elevated us and you know put us on a platform that probably made a lot of things a lot easier um not to you know undermine our our struggles as well and our efforts made but um there is that side of things too um but yeah i don't know i do feel like the work that both chrissy and i are doing feels very aligned with who we are and even if the roles continue to shift and change um i think we both have ideas of like what we're, what our purpose is on earth. And I think this, this gets pretty close to it. Um, so we'll keep doing what we're doing, you know, until we don't do it anymore. Until we don't. <laughs> Last question, piece of advice for entrepreneurs that are on the fence and want to be where you're sitting. What would you say? If you can leave them with one thing to give them that push. I would say, just speaking from my own experience, my 
business, our business takes all of me and is an extension kind of of me and of Chloe. So I would say if it doesn't feel aligned truly with your purpose and your passions, skip it, do something else, do find whatever that is. Um, because it is a ton of work to be an entrepreneur. It takes a ton of energy. And if this wasn't joyful for me, then I wouldn't want to be doing it. So it truly is a joy. And I think that for me would be my advice. And I would say like, if you're scared, good. Like, that's a good, like, that's a good, I think, calling that, like, you care a lot and it's going to be worth it to try. And even if you fail, like, who cares, right? Like, life continues to go on. So if you have an inkling or a, a craving or a desire to do something, then just do it because like, if not now, then when you're only living life once, this isn't a dress rehearsal. This is like the Broadway show. So just like, you know, throw the lights on, put on your best look and get out there. Um, because why not? Yeah, Chloe and I weren't too precious when we opened Sky Tang. I think if we sat down, looked at all the numbers, did the business model, saw what, you know, like we're yeah, really we actually prepared. Understood. <laughs> I don't think we would have done it. Like, I think that would have scared us. We, we kind of went head first and learned as we went. And I say that's kind of a good, I mean, get prepared a little bit, but also be a little, leave a little room in there to play. I think that's the perfect way to end. I couldn't agree more. You two are amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. I'm really looking forward to uh, launching this podcast. I'm also really looking forward to uh, getting outside on the sleds with my kids and trying to sled down a hill because <laughs> yes. I think that defines success for me, being able to do that and uh, and and really take a moment for 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 life and for time and for um, you know being able to be here with you all. So. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. I cannot wait to be able to pop into <laughs> one of your studios when this whole thing. Uh, yes. Shifts. Thank and you, Michael. Absolutely. Yeah, you guys are amazing. You. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great time. We'll uh, send you Sky Ting TV membership so you can try. Oh, I'd love that. I'd love that. On Sundays, yeah. I do yoga with my wife every Sunday. So I would love amazing. to uh, check out Sky Ting. Thank we have some yoga for dads videos that you can try out. Yes. Let's do <laughs> yoga for dads. I'm in. <laughs> All right. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. Gents, you still there? Still here. All righty. Um, Good stuff. I'm going to stop recording.